Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Remember to hit the like button and subscribe if you would like to receive daily updates about audiobooks. Feel free to leave book suggestions in the comments section. Living in the Light A Guide to Personal and Planetary Transformation By Shakti Gawain Chapter 18 Money Money is a symbol of our creative energy. We have invented a system whereby we use pieces of paper or metal to represent a certain unit of creative energy. For example, you earn money by using your energy, then you trade that money to me in exchange for the energy I put into writing this book or leading a workshop, and so forth. Because the creative energy of the universe in all of us is limitless and readily available, so, potentially, is money. When we follow our inner guidance and move with the flow of energy in our lives, we find we have enough money to do the things we truly need and want to do. A shortage of money often mirrors the fact that our energy is blocked in other ways. Your ability to earn and spend money abundantly and wisely is based on your ability to be a channel for the universe. The stronger and more open your channel is, the more will flow through it. The more you are willing to trust yourself, and take the risks to follow your inner guidance, the more likely you are to have all the money you need. The universe will pay you to be yourself and do what you really love. Money in the old world. The old world is based on our attachment to the external, physical world. We look for satisfaction from external things. Because we believe that survival depends on getting things, we may think that fulfillment can be found in material wealth. In the old world, you can build a strong financial structure and earn lots of money by learning how to act effectively in the world, the old male energy. However, because your actions are not based on the guidance of the universe that comes from the inner female, building your financial structure will often involve fear, competition, and struggle, and you will pay a high price for the money. You can earn money, but find that you are ruled by it. You think the money itself is important. If I have enough money, I can do these things and then I'll be happy, or, if I have enough money, then I'll feel good about myself and I'll be happy, or, other people will like me if I have enough money and that will make me happy. From this point of view money is seen to be the important thing, but as long as it is valued in this way, money is always a problem. If you have too little money, you're always struggling to get more money and always afraid there won't be enough. There's always that terrible pain inside that you don't have enough of what you need. On the other hand, from this perspective, even if you have a lot of money, it's painful because you're always afraid you're going to lose it. You can never have enough money to ensure that you won't be afraid. People with little money seldom realize that people who have a lot of money are also frightened. They are basically insecure because they never know if they might lose their money. Circumstances out of their control might arise, they might make a foolish investment or somebody might steal their money. If security is based on having money, it doesn't matter whether you have a little or a lot, you're going to be afraid. If we don't realize that money is a symbol of infinite energy, and we think there is only a limited amount of it in the world, we're stuck with two options, we can choose to have a lot of money and feel guilty, or we can choose to do without and resent those who have more. If you chose to have money, you will live with the knowledge that others have less than you. You may fear that your having more causes others to have less. You may choose to deal with the guilt by trying to deny or ignore the feeling, or you may choose to ease your conscience by attempting to help those who are less fortunate. On the other hand, you can choose to say, I won't carry that guilt. I won't take more than my share. I don't care about money anyway. Therefore, I will keep what I have to a minimum. I'll make sure that I am not taking from somebody else. The problem with this attitude is that you may end up feeling deprived. You see all the beautiful, wonderful things in the world that you would like to have and enjoy, but you can't. You see other people who have more than their share of money and you resent them. Basically, in this old world framework, we must choose either guilt or resentment. The old world structure demands we do things out of our individual strength, instead of allowing the universe to do it. 
We think we have to work really hard to get what we want, the work ethic that says, work hard. Sacrifice and struggle. Most of us have that so deeply embedded in us that we don't allow ourselves to succeed financially or in any other way, except through hard work, struggle, and sacrifice. If you are succeeding in making money, you are also paying a price emotionally, and often physically. People frequently drive themselves to the point of sickness or death. They struggle and sacrifice emotionally, and in the end, even though they have achieved worldly success, they still feel deprived and empty. Or, people refuse to go after it at all. Look what it leads to, struggle, sacrifice, pain, and deprivation of oneself, so I simply won't deal with it. I'll get by on the absolute minimum amount of money in my own life. Often, more sensitive, spiritually inclined people choose this route so they can focus on more meaningful things. The problem with this is you're actually depriving yourself of dealing with one of the most exciting and beautiful things in life. If you're denying money, you're also denying a big part of the energy of the universe and the way the world works. People who choose the denial route usually don't know how to handle money and refuse to learn anything about it. Money in the New World the new world is based on trust of the universe within us. We recognize that the creative intelligence and energy of the universe is the fundamental source of everything. Once we connect with this and surrender to it, everything is ours. Emptiness is filled from the inside. We realize that money is a reflection of the energy moving through our channel. The more we learn to operate in the world based on trust in our intuition, the stronger our channel will be and the more money we are likely to have. The money in our life is based on our ability to listen to our inner guidance and risk acting on it. When you let go of trying to control and you learn how to listen to the universe and act on it, money increasingly comes into your life. It flows in an easy, effortless, and joyful way because there is no sacrifice involved. You're no longer attached to it. Instead, you can experience the joy of learning how to follow the energy of the universe. Money is an extra bonus in the process. You know that the money is not really yours, it belongs to the universe. You act as a caretaker or steward for the money. You use it only as you are directed by the universe through your own intuition. There is no fear of loss because you know you are always taken care of. The money may come or go, but you can't lose the joy and fulfillment in your life. When you feel this secure and free, you often attract more and more money, so that you are continually pushed to deepen your trust at more intense levels with higher stakes. Ultimately, as channels, many of us will be called upon to handle large amounts of money from this place of surrender and commitment to the higher power. This is one of the ways that the power of the universe can be wielded effectively to transform the world. Active and Receptive There are active and receptive aspects of the process of channeling money, as in every other creative process. The masculine or active way of making money is to go out after something. You see something you want and go for it. The feminine or receptive way of making money is to attract what you want to you. We have to be able to do both. We need to release the outgoing energy that wants to move toward a certain goal and risk fearlessly acting on it. We also need to practice nurturing ourselves, appreciating ourselves, and becoming attuned to our inner selves so that we can attract and receive what we want. Many people are developed on one side or the other. They either know how to go after things, but have a hard time attracting things to them, or they know how to attract things but are afraid to go out after them. Often a balancing process is necessary. You may need to learn to receive the gifts, appreciation, love, and energy coming to you. Or you may need to practice outflowing your energy into the world, which keeps it flowing through your channel. This way, the energy doesn't get blocked on either end. This means, on a practical level, you have to be willing to take some risks in the area of work and money. If you do only what you think you should do in order to make money and be secure, then you won't listen to the intuitive voice that tells you what you really need to do. This can be very scary when it entails your job and your money. 
People often want to know, what do I do if my intuition tells me not to go to work one day? What do I do then? Will I lose my job? If taking off a day from work seems too risky, it may not be the best choice for you yet. You may need to strengthen your channel by following your impulses in smaller ways at first. You may call in and take half a day off or you may plan for a three-day weekend. One day though, you may wake up and know, I just don't want to go to work, and you will follow through with this and feel good about it. Usually, when my insides tell me to take time off, I need some nurturing, some peace and quiet, some creative time for inspiration to come through, or time to simply feel old feelings stirring up inside, feelings that need to be felt and released. If you risk following your impulse, you'll find, maybe a few hours or days later, your energy will actually be renewed. You'll be able to go back and do what needs to be done in a fourth of the time. You'll do it in a much more inspired and creative way. Anything can happen if you risk and trust yourself. While home, you may receive a phone call from a person offering you a better job that pays much more money, that happened to a friend of mine. You may get a creative inspiration that will open up a fun, prosperous opportunity for you or you may get an inspiration to go visit someone who will give you a lead to a great adventure. If you hate your job, though, your energy for it won't come back. Also, because your true creative energy is blocked, you'll continue to feel blocked financially. Eventually, you will probably leave your job because you cannot stay stuck in such a place for long. Basically, the whole issue of money is doing what you really want to do as much of the time as possible. The universe will reward you for taking risks on its behalf. It's important, though, that the risks you take are proportionate to the level of structure you're building. In other words, if you're just beginning to learn how to trust and follow your intuition, you probably don't want to make a million-dollar deal on a gut feeling. You probably don't want to leap off a building and hope that you can fly. It is important that you build small things first. Practice following your intuition in everyday things. Say no, even though you're feeling pressured to say yes. Do the thing you want to do even though you don't know why. Do it on an impulse. Make that call. Enroll in that class. Think of the things you love to do, and do them. This will strengthen you to the point where you can make the big leaps. Balance. Once you understand the basic process of learning how to follow your intuition and act on it, you have your groundwork for channeling money. There are, though, some aspects of relating more specifically to money that are important to know. Balance is an important quality to develop in building the structure of your channel. If you have been extreme in one direction, you may have to go to the extreme in the other direction in order to integrate and balance both aspects of everything. For example, if you have been very careless and casual about money, or if you have been a person who has denied the existence or importance of money in your life, you may need to build structures specifically related to money. These include, learning to balance your checkbook, budgeting money, and gaining an understanding of the rules that govern how money works in the world. You will find these practices interesting, even fascinating. They are no longer something that will block you from the spirit, they will open the way for you to have more spirit flowing through you. People who have little understanding of money have usually chosen to avoid structure on one level or another because they feel rules, regulations, and details will keep them from experiencing the magic of life. They're afraid they'll spend all their time in their rational mind, instead of following their flow. If you have this fear, tune in and ask the universe for guidance. You'll want to do this in a way that makes you feel good. Perhaps it would help to hire someone to show you how to organize your finances. It does not have to be a painful process. You'll find it to be energizing and supportive in your life, as opposed to painful and boring. Those who have already applied a great deal of structure to working with money in the world may need to let go and relax that structure. It's time to stop following your rules and allow the inspired aspect of the spirit of money to work in your life. Trust your intuition to guide you, and take more risks in doing things differently than usual. Similarly, 
if you've been a person who has saved your money and been very careful about spending it, you need to learn to spend more impulsively based on your intuition. Spend on the basis of a gut feeling of wanting something. Learn to follow these impulses and you'll find you won't end up broke. In fact, it actually creates a greater flow of money in your life. You're able to release and give it out, based on your intuition. If you have been a spendthrift and always spent more than you actually have, you will probably need to plan more and budget. Again, do it in accordance with an inner feeling. If you're open to it, your intuition will tell you, hey, learn something about planning. Learn something about budgeting. It will support and help you. It won't make you feel restricted. If you follow your intuition about this, you will be led to people who can show you how to do it, and it will be an interesting process. Again, it will support your channel. Focus. Another important thing to know about how money works is that it will always flow into whatever you've created in your life to receive it. Because it's energy, it will be attracted to what you need or want or envision. If you have always operated on a survival level with money, having only enough money to take care of your basic needs, that's where your money will go. If you start to attract more money into your life, you may have the tendency to increase your basic needs and still only make enough to survive. That's what happened to me for a long time. I had an underlying program that said, I can only have as much money as I need. It's not okay to have more than I need. Consequently, I created more needs, and ones that weren't particularly rewarding. My car would break down and I'd have expensive repair bills, or my cat would get sick and I'd have an expensive vet bill. Any extra money that came in would go towards something that was an emergency or a basic need. There was still nothing extra for fun and creative play or greater luxury. I found that I needed to create a budget that included what I wanted as well as what I needed. I started at a reasonable level, I'd like to buy at least one item of clothing each month that's fun or more luxurious. I'd also like to do some activity that would be fun. I would include these in my budget and the money for them would then flow in. That's the power of budgeting. A budget is like a blueprint. If you create a list, a picture in your mind of what you want to have in your life, you will create the necessary money. You can just keep expanding step by step. My money history. For most of my adult life I had very little money. I never focused much on money, I wasn't particularly interested in it. Essentially, I did whatever I had to do to pay my rent and bills, but I put most of my time and attention into my education and my pursuit of consciousness and creative expansion. I always did whatever I needed to get the money, various projects, housework, odd jobs, even my own business. Only one time in my entire life did I have a 9 to 5 job, for 6 months. I was used to living on the edge without much sense of where my money was coming from. In those years, I learned to trust that somehow the money would be there. Sometimes I would get down to my last dollar and then, somehow or other, more money would come. I was always cared for. Then, gradually, as I began to use this process more and more, learning to trust my intuition and act on it, learning to listen to my inner guidance and risk putting myself out in the world, I developed a career counseling people, teaching workshops, writing, and publishing books. As I followed my passion, I began to earn more money and to lead a more abundant lifestyle. It continued to the point where I was actually making a good income and living in a beautiful apartment, doing most of the things that I wanted to do. I came to count on that amount of money, although it was never a secure thing. I was still living from month to month, but money always seemed to keep flowing. I constantly affirmed my trust in the universe to take care of me, and I tried to follow its guidance. But a time came, all of a sudden, when I had no money. Some unexpected things happened and I was caught short. I paid my rent and my bills, and I looked in my checkbook and there was nothing left. I didn't have any savings or other resources to fall back on. That was a very startling experience because by that time, I was used to having a certain amount of money. 
What amazed me about this experience is that I had only five minutes of fear. I thought, oh my god, what am I going to do? Then, I felt totally calm. I had to have that five minutes of fear, and then, it was as if there were no more fears about money left after that. I knew I was going to be okay. A key point to this is that I knew I would be willing to do whatever the universe asked me to do. I remember thinking, well, I love my apartment, but I could give it up. I love all the things I have, but I could give them up. If the universe wants me to go live in a tent in someone's backyard, I'll do that. It will probably be wonderful. There was an incredible feeling of trust and knowing that none of the things I might lose were that important. Whatever I did next, even though it might be totally different, would be wonderful, too. I would be taken care of. It wasn't just an intellectual knowing, because I had already known this intellectually for a long time. Living through those five minutes of fear left me with a feeling of fearlessness. Emotionally, I knew that I was okay. It was a very profound experience. I ended up cutting back a little bit on my expenses and lifestyle. That felt fine and I didn't feel deprived at all. In fact, it was a nice discipline for a while. Everything I needed was provided. Money came in to cover my expenses and I had a feeling of relief. I knew I had come to the level of income my form could currently handle. I wasn't ahead of myself in any way and from then on, it was as if I came to earth and was building from a solid foundation. At that moment, I felt I was standing on a strong base of trust in the universe. From then on, I knew the amount of money in my life would keep expanding, and I would never go back to not having. After that happened, there was an increasing flow of money in my life. I moved to a new level of business and finance that I had never dealt with before. I had become really good at learning how to follow the universe on one level, but the new challenge was learning to trust at a more expanded level where the stakes were higher. In confronting this new level of prosperity, I felt at first rather ignorant and helpless. I knew I needed help, so I asked the universe to send me the right people to teach and guide me in this area. After interviewing a number of different financial advisors, I was led to both an accountant and a business manager who were perfect for me and who helped me learn what I needed to know. Like most people, I have found that as my income expands, my expenses and responsibilities seem to expand right along with it. Interestingly enough, it seems to work in reverse as well, I always seem to create exactly as much money as I need to support the lifestyle I have created. Sometimes, when I'm confronted with a large unexpected expense, I wonder how it's going to get handled. One way or another, it always does, often in surprising and unexpected ways. It frequently seems as if some higher power within me is watching over me and making the whole thing work. My job is to keep learning more on a practical level about managing my business and financial situation, while continuing to do my inner work of learning not to push myself so hard, and how to relax and receive more easily. The more I bring myself into balance, the more smoothly money flows in my life. Here is a wonderful story that illustrates the miraculous way the universe works when we trust and follow our intuition. In the original edition of Living in the Light, I wrote about buying a piece of property in Hawaii because I had a strong intuitive feeling that it was the right thing to do. Logically, it did not make sense, and my financial advisors were not in favor of it. Still, I went ahead because it felt right to me. One factor in this decision was the fact that this beautiful land was about to be bought by an unscrupulous and exploitive developer. At the time I wrote the book, I wasn't quite sure what would happen next, but felt very empowered by trusting myself that much. Subsequently, I had many moments of doubting that decision. I wanted to create a home and a retreat center in Hawaii, but I soon realized this piece of land was not large enough. Also, this land was on Maui and I felt strongly that I needed to be on Kauai. I eventually decided to sell this property. It took quite some time before it was sold, however, and ultimately resulted in a moderate financial loss for me. Since the sale was handled by an agent, 
I didn't meet the purchasers of the property. I chalked the whole thing up to a learning experience and eventually bought the property I real ly wanted on Kauai, where I still live. A few years later, my mother, who lives on Maui, happened to meet the two men who had bought my property. They told her this amazing story, they had been living in Los Angeles, working hard and longing for a big change in their lives. They read my book Creative Visualization and decided to move to Hawaii. They began visualizing the ideal property they would like to find there, and got a very vivid image and feeling about it. They took a trip to Maui and looked at many pieces of property, but none was right. Just as they were about to leave, they went to see one last piece, and it was exactly as they imagined. Someone else had put in an offer, but that offer fell through, and they were able to buy it. Only when they signed the papers did they realize that they were buying my property. We eventually became friends. They developed the property beautifully, creating a lovely flower farm and bed and breakfast, and have lived there happily for many years. I now feel that I was guided to buy that property in order to make sure that it got to the people who were meant to care for it. I may have lost some money, but I gained enormous satisfaction. Meditation Sit or lie down in a position that is comfortable for you. Close your eyes and begin breathing in an easy, natural way. With each breath, you are becoming more deeply relaxed. Begin to notice how you're feeling. How do you feel emotion, ally? How does your body feel? Notice the energy in your body. What does it feel like? See yourself taking in more energy with each breath. You are energized and alive. Start to imagine this energy as money. As you open to your own energy, you open to abundance. Imagine having all the money you need to do the things that are most important to you, and to create a lifestyle that is in harmony with your being and with the earth. Exercise. Lack of money may mirror the energy blocks within you. Write down all the ways in which you limit your desires and creativity. In what ways are you not doing what you want to do? Some examples of this are, 1, I'm doing administrative work in an office when I'd rather be working with children. 2, I want to meditate, but there's never time. 3, I'd like to explore my art more, but I have no time, I have to earn a living. 4, I want to tell my mother, friend, partner, how I'm feeling, but am afraid I'll hurt her, him. Now imagine yourself doing exactly what you want to do in each of these areas. Chapter 19 Health Our body is our primary creation, the vehicle we have chosen to express us in the physical world. By looking at our bodies, listening to them, and feeling them, we can read a great deal about our spiritual, mental, and emotional energy patterns. The body is our primary feedback mechanism that can show us what is and isn't working about our way of thinking, expressing, and living. Any normal child, who has had a reasonably positive environment, has a beautiful, lively body filled with vitality. That beauty, aliveness, and vitality are simply the natural energy of the universe flowing freely through, unimpeded by negative habits. Small children in a supportive environment are totally spontaneous beings. They eat when they are hungry, fall asleep when they are tired, and express exactly what they feel. Therefore, their energy doesn't get blocked, and they are constantly renewed and revitalized by their own natural energy. But because none of us have had even a close to perfect upbringing, very early we begin to develop habits that run counter to our natural energy. These habits are designed to help us survive in the neurotic world in which we find ourselves. We pick these patterns up from our families, friends, teachers, and the community in general. As we follow the behavior we have observed in others, or as we attempt to follow the rules laid down by others, we may move in ways that are counter to our own natural flow. We stop acting on what we know physically and emotionally, we no longer say and do what we really feel. We stop listening to the signals our body gives us about the food, rest, exercise, and nurturing it needs. It becomes too risky to follow our own energy, 
so we block that flow and gradually begin to experience less and less energy in vitality. As the energy flow diminishes, the body is not physically revitalized as quickly, thus, it begins to age and deteriorate. As we repeat chronic negative behaviors, our bodies begin to reflect these patterns, such as hunching over to express the inner pattern of making oneself small and powerless. If you are willing to allow the energy of the universe to move through you by trusting and following your intuition, you will increase your sense of aliveness and your body will reflect this with increasing health, beauty, and vitality. Every time you don't trust yourself and don't follow your inner truth, you decrease your aliveness and your body will reflect this with a loss of vitality, numbness, pain, and eventually physical disease. Disease is a message from our bodies, telling us that, in some way, we are not following our true energy or supporting our feelings. The body gives us many such signals, starting with relatively subtle feelings of tiredness and discomfort. If we don't pay attention to these cues and make the appropriate changes, our bodies will give us stronger signals, including aches, pains, and minor illnesses. If we still don't change, a serious or fatal illness or accident may eventually occur. The stronger messages can often be avoided by paying attention to the subtler ones. But once a strong message has come, it is never too late to be healed, if that is what we truly desire. At this point, however, many beings do not choose the healing. They decide to leave their bodies and start over with a new one, or move to another realm, rather than trying to work their way through all the old patterns in this one. If you are suffering from disease, rest. Your body always wants rest and ease if it's sick. Then, when you've become quiet, ask your body what the message in your illness is. Your body will always attempt to tell you what you need in order to heal yourself. One of my friends had been having severe pain on the right side of her face. Intuitively, she felt the pain would ease if she'd open her mouth and state more of what she wanted and more of what she knew. She did this and the pain eased some, but it still wasn't gone. One night, in a mood of surrender, she told the universe she was sick of the whole thing and she asked for an answer. Then, she let go of thinking about the problem and went to sleep. In her dreams that night, her intuition told her to stop taking brewer's yeast. She immediately discounted the entire message as bizarre and continued to take yeast. Then a few days later, after continued prodding from her intuition, she stopped taking yeast. Two days later, her face pain cleared up. When you ask for a healing, you never know what your body is going to tell you. It may tell you to stop or start eating something, express some feelings to a friend, quit your job, or go see a doctor. The key is to ask and then listen for a response. A client came to me who had been suffering from severe back pain for a year and a half. During the session, I asked him to con, tack the pain and ask his body what it was trying to tell him. In doing this, he realized he had not yet grieved his mother's death or expressed the anger he felt toward his father. He was holding both anger and sadness in his back. Recognizing this relieved some of the pain. After more talking, he was able to cry about his mother's death. Shortly after this, he became willing to express his anger toward his father. He started by talking to me about it, as well as writing out all his feelings. His back pain went away. His back pain has continued to be a barometer of suppressed feelings, he knows now that if he's in pain he needs to back himself up by expressing some feelings. Once we've developed a symptom, it can recur if the behavior recurs. Our bodies serve us by accurately informing us of any blocked energy. Below I've listed some common causes of pain or illness in the body. These may or may not be accurate for you. Each is accompanied with a healing affirmation. Use them if they feel right for you, or make up your own. Headache, two conflicting energies or feelings within, allow both sides to have a voice. I am now willing to hear all my feelings. Cold, the body needs rest, a clearing out of the old the body needs to get back into balance. 
I am now willing to let go of the old. I now have rest and ease in my life. My body is in perfect harmony. Complexion problems, held back male energy, a need to take action and or express yourself more directly. I go all out for what I feel and what I want. I express my feelings clearly and directly. Skin rashes, wanting to break out and take action, ask yourself, what am I itching to do? I act on what my intuitive tells me. I am willing to try new things. I do what I want to do. Allergies, a lack of trust in the intuitive or instinctual energies, repressed feelings, allergies related to watery eyes are often indicative of suppressed sadness. I trust and express my feelings. It's safe to feel and express my sadness and anger. Back pain, a feeling that you have to support others, the world. A need to express and support your feelings, lower back pain is often suppressed sadness, upper back pain is often suppressed anger. I support all my feelings. I take care of myself. I express and trust my feelings. I trust others to take proper care of themselves. Menstrual cramps, not fully listening to and honoring your female aspect, a need to be quiet and go within. I honor my female completely and act on what she tells me to do. I relax, rest, and nurture myself regularly. Vision problems, not wanting to look at certain things within yourself or in the world. Often there is a decision early in life not to look at what you are intuitively seeing because it is too painful, when the inner vision is shut down, the external vision is impaired as well. I am now willing to see everything in my life clearly. Hearing problems, needing to shut out external voices and influences, needing to listen more to your inner voice. I don't have to listen to anyone else. I listen to, and trust, my own inner voice. Addiction. The more uncomfortable we are about trusting our natural energy, the more likely we are to use drugs such as coffee, cigarettes, alcohol, unwholesome foods or too much food, marijuana, speed, cocaine, or whatever, to attempt to manipulate our energy. We thereby deplete and denigrate the body further. Most people are afraid of their energy and power. They're either afraid of being too much or too little. They're afraid of having too much energy or not enough. The truth is, if people would be willing to let go of using addictive substances, they'd find their own perfect flow of energy. By doing this, they'd tap their true source of power and creativity. I see addiction as a means people use to pace, control, this power. Many powerful and creative people become addicts because they do not have an internal strength to support their energy. Without a trust in the universe, one's power and creativity can seem overwhelming. With substances, you can force your natural energy or you can dampen it, but either way, you're stopping the natural flow of the universe coming through. You don't have to be a full-blown addict to realize you're using a substance to manipulate your energy. You may realize you're drinking three cups of coffee to energize yourself then discover you're depleted later. We are a nation addicted to coffee, which I consider a strong drug because it seriously impairs your ability to trust and follow your energy. The key is to notice what you're doing. Become aware of when and why you use coffee. Notice how it changes your energy. Eventually, you will find that you don't need to pay that price any more. Realize that we all use some form of addiction to pace ourselves. The cure for this is to build trust in ourselves and the universe. Become increasingly willing to experience your own power and strength. This is the true healing. For those who have a drug or alcohol addiction, noticing that you're pacing yourself is not enough. It may make you more aware of your problem and how shut down you are, but generally the physical craving takes over any awareness. Because of this, I encourage people to get help and support through a group such as Alcoholics Anonymous or Narcotics Anonymous to recover from alcohol or drug addiction. This gives the body a chance to heal and the spirit and emotions a chance to be heard. For more information about self-healing, you may wish to read my book The Four Levels of Healing, 
a guide to balancing the spiritual, mental, emotional, and physical aspects of life. Meditation Sit or lie down, close your eyes, and take a few deep breaths. With each breath, feel your body letting go into a deeply relaxed place. Relax your mind and let your thoughts drift. Try not to attach yourself to any thoughts you're having. Feel yourself relax into a quiet place within. This deep place is a source of nourishment and healing for you. Know that you can go here and find anything you need to know to heal yourself. If you've been having a problem with your health or you have a question you want to ask your intuition about your body, take the opportunity to do this now. Ask, what do I need to do to heal myself now? What does my body need? When you've asked, stay open to any answers that will come to you. An answer or an intuitive feeling may come right away, or it may come in the next couple of days. It may come to you in a direct solution or you may be guided to a person or place that will give you the answers you need. Know that you can heal yourself and that limitless wisdom lies within you. Say these affirmations silently or aloud, I am now healing myself. I am energized, alive, and filled with radiant health. Alternative Meditation If there is a particular part of your body that is sick or in pain, try this meditation. Get comfortable, take a few deep breaths, completely relax your body and mind. Now, put your consciousness into that place and ask it what it is feeling and what it is trying to tell you. Then, be receptive to feeling and hearing what its message to you is. Ask that part of your body what you need to do to heal yourself. Pay attention to, and follow, whatever it tells you.